Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 13th of November. So in the upcoming week, uh, the focus in the US will center on the eagerly awaited inflation rate data with retail sales and speeches by Fed officials also taking the spotlight. Additionally, attention will be directed towards producer prices, industrial production, export and import prices, as well as building permits and housing starts. Internationally, the UK, um, in the UK, investors will closely monitor inflation rate, retail sales and unemployment rates a lot going on in the UK uh, the week uh, will also unveil Q3 uh, third quarter GDP growth rates for Japan and finally G uh, Germany will release ZEW economic sentiment index and Australia will provide updates on both Westpac consumer confidence and NAB business confidence and that's from tradingeconomics.com so um, lots to um, or lots of uh, potential catalysts fundamental catalysts uh, for price this week so looking at the uh, the charts and it's really kind of starting off on the dollar index um, and last week we did have some news that came out with regards to non-farm payrolls and I did think that prices would <clears throat> start to maybe this uh, in, in the last week kind of come down a bit before uh, being a buyer but uh, it looks like prices ended up you know reversing uh, straight away from Monday and didn't look back I know a lot of traders were you know definitely short and um and so uh, my overall bias was is still you know long dollars, but um, I th I thought like in the short term prices may come down to certain levels before looking at uh, long trades. So um, this week didn't really get into any uh, any dollar trades, although there was definitely uh, an opportunity to or lots of opportunities to on on dollar crosses. But uh, this week I think any pullbacks on um, on the dollar uh, a, a definitely buying opportunity. So looking at the um, the dollar index, what you're looking for is, and again, you would use the dollar index as more to do with confluence, um, is really kind of a pullback into, you know, a bit of a demand zone before looking at going long. And kind of to support that bias is the fact that we have, um, and let me just uh, take this off. Um, it says uh, stubborn core inflation helps explain some Fed restlessness. So underlying price pressures, so inflation pressures are seen advancing at a pace that backs apprehension uh, among Fed uh, Reserve officials to signal all the all clear in their inflation fighting efforts. And so um, core inflation is... Uh, you know, um, maybe going to stay a bit sticky. So it says, while considerable progress has been made since hitting a multi-decade high a year ago, the pace of inflation remains elevated and above the Fed's goal, which is around 2%. Having paused tightening at consecutive meetings, leaving the benchmark rate at 22-year high, policymakers are uh, proceeding deliberately and not ruling out further increases so they're you know they're they're a bit hawkish because of the fact that inflation hasn't necessarily come down as much as they would like um it says here that if it becomes uh, it's a quote i think from jerome powell says if it becomes appropriate to tighten policy further we will not hesitate to do so jerome chair jerome powell said on thursday we will continue to move carefully however allowing us to address both the risks of being um, misled by a few good months of data and the risk of over tightening. So um, it sounds uh, a bit hawkish or more hawkish than dovish for sure. And so um, that should support the dollar at least in the short term if the data does come out and inflation remains uh, sticky this week. So um, for me, any pullbacks on the dollar, potential buying opportunities, but if inflation does come out and it comes in lower than expected, then it really kind of takes rate hikes off the table and then you'll probably get maybe a follow through to the downside on the dollar. But um, I don't think it will be, you know, um, the beginning of any kind of dollar trend to the downside or anything like that, because there are uh, currencies that are in a much worse uh, position. So moving on to the dollar yen. And again, this week I was waiting for prices really to kind of pull back into, you know, these zones before looking at the potential for a uh, long trade um, <clears throat> or an opportunity. Uh, I think the yen at the moment. There is uh, some news out or supposed to be out this week with regards to GDP. 
Um, and uh, I think that if, again, that kind of supports um, the monetary policy change from the uh, from the Bank of Japan, then that will definitely be supportive um, for, for, for the yen. But um, buying the yen at certain levels to the downside or buying the, uh, the dollar to the to, uh, to at these levels within this kind of wider area of demand wasn't necessarily a bad you know play it's just obviously uh starting monday prices just went to the upside now we are at an area where you can look for short trades right now in anticipation this week so you know not only do we have uh you know core inflation news and inflation news for the uh, for the dollar but we also have gdp news for the yen as well as a uh, balance of trade so um lots going on um i think the path for these res these resistance is still really to the upside but the catalyst for buying any of uh, the yen would be better than expected data and i do think and i said this last week and i'm going to continue to say this um i do think that, that the yen is going to be a, a very good buy in or could be a very good buy in uh 2024 next year as we get into next year and as the bank of japan or if the bank of japan starts to remove yield curve control and uh, increase their interest rates while other banks are not and they're actually looking to cut next year then the yen should be really the um the dominant currency uh, in, in that environment. So let's see what happens here. But these are really the levels or if you're looking for short trades right now, then you can look towards uh, the 151s or just above there. Zooming out a bit, I think, yeah, the high uh, really uh, since the last uh, intervention was at the 151s. So anything above there and even potentially the you could look for a stop hunt into the 152s would be decent to the downside looking at the dollar cad dollar cad prices again came down but were supported at this demand zone the 136 area um, again looking for maybe a bit of a deeper pullback before looking at getting long but that didn't happen this week so again my bias is still to look for long trades so let's see what happens um, if we do get a pullback but again a pullback if prices come back down into that zone but if for example inflation comes out really you know much lower than expected then you could see in fact prices come down a bit more but I do think these demand zones are uh, potential buying opportunities seeing as the uh, the dollar um, from an economic perspective is a is a lot um, stronger than uh, Canada. Canada is pretty much on the uh, on the on the border. In fact, let me get a uh, go to trading economics uh, two sex. Yeah, so this is the GDP uh, growth rate for uh, the United States. And if you want to compare, um, you know, countries. So what you do is go to compare right there. Pick a country and then go to Canada, which should be here. And then what you want to do is pick indicator and then look for the same. Uh, indicator to compare it to so it would be GDP uh, growth rate right there and then you can see in fact if you zoom in a bit more you'll see that um, the Canadian GDP growth rate is currently at zero yeah right there the black line whereas obviously we've seen that the US GDP growth rate is currently at I think it's like 4.9 uh, percent. So, who's closer to a recession is is the, is really the key thing. So, uh, for me, um, you know, any 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 uh, pullbacks on the dollar in terms of the short term, I think are buying opportunities as they are the, uh, the furthest away from a uh, recession. So that's where my bias is. Uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, again a bit of a pullback. Dollar strength this week. Um, the New Zealand dollar is, I guess, uh, decent. They did have some better than expected growth GDP recently, um, but I think. Uh, overall the dollar should be the one the US dollar should be the, the, the stronger of the currencies and so any pullbacks into the you know uh, the, the 60 cent and probably beyond should be decent uh, for a short trade um, uh, idea but if you do want to get long on the uh, on the New Zealand dollar based really on um, any kind of dollar weakness then I think if prices pull back down to these demand zones and then you get like a bit of a fundamental catalyst then that is a decent uh, buy opportunity down at those lows pound uh dollar so pound dollar this week after this major move to the upside 
came into this supply zone and then um, pretty much sold off, right? On the Monday, straight uh, sold off. And so um, I know a lot of traders would, would have been definitely going long. Breakout traders are caught um, up up at these um, areas and what do I mean by breakout traders? So breakout traders would have been looking at that level on a daily, trading that breakout and now they're caught on the wrong side of the market or they've been stopped out. If they don't use stop losses or move and remove their stop losses, this is what's known as a CPR, matter of fact, this area here, capture pain relief. Um, I have videos on capture pain relief so you can have a look at that kind of setup. And I do think that if prices do come back up to here, this could be a decent area to look for a, uh, a short trade, providing of course the data supports both selling of the pound and buying of the dollar. And talking about uh, the UK, it says uh, here, sorry, I've gone to a bit too far. Um, it says UK starves off, staves off recession um, threat uh, for now with stagnant quarter. So uh, the UK economy flatlined in the third quarter to find forecasts for a small contraction and ensuring uh, a recession is avoided this year as strong uh, trade came to the rescue of poor domestic activity. So you can see here that um, pretty much we flatlined. The expectation was actually for a negative growth, um, uh, minus 0.1%, but it came in at basically zero. Um, it says here that Britain's Britain is in a stagnation. Is it is sorry is a stagnation nation that has struggled to secure sustained economic growth since the financial crisis, says James Smith, research director at the Resolution Foundation think tank. And falling domestic demand uh, may also help to convince the Bank of England policymakers they have done enough to bring inflation under control after raising interest rates from 0.1% to 5.25% in less than two years. And so interest rates are definitely having an effect on uh, the economy and contracting the economy. And what Bloomberg Economist says is that the latest GDP data offers some hope for the economy uh, might be able to dodge a recession despite the strain from higher interest rates, though it's too early to sound the all clear just yet about half uh, the impact of the Bank of England's actions to date is still to hit the economy. The jobs market is cooling while both excess savings and fiscal uh, support are dwindling. In short, the line between stagnation and contraction will remain a fine one in the coming quarters. So though they may have potentially avoid a recession this year, there could be a recession next year. And it says here that traders are betting that rates have peaked with the Bank of England expected uh, to begin cutting them from next from August next year, the path remained broadly unchanged on Friday with a 15% chance of a 25 basis point increase next month and almost three quarter point cuts by the end of next year. So, um, yeah, so not looking uh, great for the uh, the UK uh, at the moment in terms of again uh, recessions. Uh, or just avoiding the recession, which is mildly positive. But overall, again, if you compare where the US is in comparison to the UK, um, unless the UK is seen as, you know, um, not only avoiding the recession, but growing, then, um, you know, the pound could rally. But I think um, for now, the path of this resistance is still to the downside when you consider not just the trend, because the trend is as a result of, um, you know, the fundamentals, right? But you know, for anyone who is, you know, trend following, you can see where the dominant, you know, trend is. So, uh, yeah, any pullbacks to these areas and even just above there, I think going to be good levels to look for any kind of short trades. But if there's a reversal in fortune of the fundamentals, then a pullback into uh, these 120 areas, I think is going to be decent for a um, a buy trade for the pound. But again, you would need supportive uh, fundamental data on that one. Um, looking at the pound yen and again the pound yen I think I'd really want to be a buyer of the yen over the pound at the moment or try to position anyway um, simply because of um, you know what may happen next year in terms of a monetary policy change so as we're coming up into these actual highs um, I think anywhere around these highs the 186s 187s I think it's going to be really nice I think for a potential uh, short trade so let's see what happens with that but if you are looking to be a buyer of the pound and there's some positive data then I think any of these levels the 184s 183s 7s and the 182s 7s are probably going to be <clears throat> the areas to look for potential uh, buy trades euro dollar um, euro dollar decent um, move to the downside prices popped just above that supply zone but ended up 
hitting this uh, supply zone here, which was from the 107.50s. Um, and then uh, we've kind of sold off from there with a with a hawkish uh, Fed. Now uh, Lagarde was also Christine Lagarde was also uh, slightly hawkish. I guess she kind of has to be. Um, but it says here that the European Central Bank uh, Christine Lagarde said that keeping the deposit rate at four percent should be enough to tame inflation. But officials will consider raising borrowing costs again if they need to. So um, let's see what happens with that. Of course. The inflation target is two percent, and if they um, if inflation remains sticky or goes higher, then they're going to have to try and hike rates. Now, I don't know whether it would be positive or appreciative of the euro because of the fact that the euro is in um, a potential uh, was in the contraction phase. The last GDP to come out was at zero point one minus zero point one percent. So um, hiking in a recession. Um, only really kind of contracts an economy or is likely to contract an economy even more. So it says here that weeks after policymakers refrain from further increases for the first time since their tightening cycle began last year, she signalled an event organised by the Financial Times that the central bank is gaining confidence that current monetary policy settings to do the trick. So higher interest rates or interest rates staying at 4% is getting inflation down is is the uh, is the theme so it says here uh, the quote is the the level where we're at, at the moment if we sustain it for long enough we can debate that of course will make a significant contribution to bringing inflation back to our two percent target the guard said on friday if major shocks come up depending on the nature of those shocks we'll have to revisit that so Again, nobody can predict the future, right? So there could be um, an energy crisis, for example. There could be, you know, recessionary forces. Um, and so if there is, for example, some sort of energy, you know, oil starts to go back up or energy shocks, a really cold winter that drives energy prices up, energy prices will contribute to inflation. And then if inflation rises, then the central bank may have to start to high rates, so it's important to keep an eye on um, other markets as well. Um, but we also have here Mario Draghi, who was the ex um, European Central Bank um, head of the European Central Bank. He says that eurozone recession is almost sure to happen. So the eurozone is nearly certain to experience a recession by the end of 2023. Former European Central Bank President Mario Draghi said, according to the Financial Times, speaking on Wednesday to a conference in Brussels organized by the newspaper, he said the slump probably won't be deep or destabilizing. Um, he said it's uh, almost sure we're going to have a recession by the end of the year or by the year end. Um, uh, the FT cited the ex-central banker and former prime minister of Italy as saying it is quite clear the first two quarters of next year will show that. So, um, you know, not saying it's definitely going to happen. Again, he says almost sure to happen. Um, of course, there are things that can, um, things can be avoided, but in, you know, the trading world, we're looking at probabilities. And so with recession fears going on, I think, again, the path of this resistance is to the downside. I'm not saying it's going to go down this week, you know, uh, you know, all the way down this week. Nothing moves in a straight line. We could even see prices pull back. But I think any pullbacks, if you've missed out on uh, shorting the euro, um, I think are decent opportunities to look to reestablish uh, short positions. Euro yen um, took actually a, a, a small trade here, ended up pretty much breaking even around here. Um, but yeah, we're just seeing prices go higher and higher. Now, um, again, I think a fundamental trigger on this will be this week. So um, in terms of uh, looking at uh, supply zones to look for uh, short trades, it's I think the nearest supply zone or the nearest level is going to be not until, what was this, 2008? I think we've got levels. So you can't really kind of count these er these areas here. So I think um, trying to look for short trades, you'd have to wait for proof of value. So proof that the um, that the uh, the yen uh, is selling off and then wait for a pullback into a zone before looking at going short. So that would really be where you're looking what what price action you're looking for if again the um the data does support buying uh the yen if you are looking at buying the euro then <clears throat> you know you've pretty much got that area there um and looking for in fact within that area uh, one of the things you can do is look for an area of support and resistance so i think that zone right there within that area of demand um is decent for a potential buy 
right, right here, and then look for intraday. You can look for intraday. If you trade intraday, of course, you know, four hour, one hour entries. We have our strategies at Trading 180 to look for uh, buy trades in here, but I'm personally not looking to buy the euro. If anything, I'm looking to buy the yen over the euro um, uh, towards or from now uh, into 2023 and just hoping that the data does support yen buying. Looking at the Aussie dollar and looking at the daily, so looking at daily, we've pulled back on the Australian dollar. Now there was a rate hike on the Australian dollar uh, this week. I think most people expected prices to go uh, a lot higher. Um, I think that um, we're now really within an, within an auction. I think that um, the although the new uh, the Australian dollar is uh, hiking rates, I think they're coming to an end of their hike. But we could see prices move to the upside. Risk sentiment is also having an effect on the uh, Australian dollar, could be having an effect on the Australian dollar. Um, so let's see what happens there. Uh, but this is, isn't really a pair that I would look towards uh, buying or selling or trading uh, simply because you've really got two currencies, I think, which are two of probably the strongest pairs. And what we should see when you have two uh, pairs that are um, potentially appreciating, uh, you will get what is known as a range or what I term as uh, an auction, right? Always known as an auction. So that's what I think is gonna happen um, uh, in and around these uh, these areas. So we could see if, again, the dollar comes out um, and, the, and inflation comes down worse than expected or we get some more positive news out of maybe business confidence this week or the consumer change, um, uh, confidence uh, change then uh, we could see a move to the upside. So, um, but yeah, either way, I think, at these highs or just above these highs in a fresh area of supply at one at 0.654s or around these lows around the 62, 63 to 62, 50 uh, cent area would be where I'd be looking for buys or sells, but not really looking to trade this pair. Then you've got the Aussie yen. Again, Aussie yen came up to really this high, this recent high of uh, June 2023. It was just an expensive area here and it seemed expensive here, but I think at the moment, again, a tricky pair to kind of trade in terms of risk sentiment and fundamentals. But if you do want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar, look for uh, a buy trades just at the start of this uh, demand zone. If you are looking at uh, trying to get short on this and again to buy the Japanese yen against the Australian dollar um, you know you could definitely do it but I think there are better or there are weaker pairs in the Australian dollar to buy against like for example the Canadian dollar um, then you can look for um, a move back up into this area if you've missed this move to the downside or just above and then look for uh, some short trades and finally <clears throat> looking at gold and gold has pulled back after this you know massive run whenever you get a big run like this with rarely any kind of deep pullback at some point you're going to get a deep pullback so um if you are a bull um bullish on on gold uh just look at this as a discount right so if this is uh, a cheap area this is a bargain area and this is an expensive area yeah so this is bargain price wouldn't anyone who missed out on this in this move higher would have loved to have got involved in gold at 18 tenths, right? So now this is seen as the most recent bargain. Now this is seen as expensive, right? $2,000 an ounce for gold is now seen as expensive. Why do we know that? Because prices haven't gone higher. If it was seen as a, still, still a cheap price, then we would see prices go higher. So, but at this point in time, it's not, right? It's seen as quite expensive. There's profit taking going on, etc. So in between an expensive area, right? And a cheap area is known as fair value, right? Fair value is 50% of, you know, discounts and premiums. So we're pulling back into what is known as, you know, fair value, right? And so I think that, in fact, or start anywhere from now into the, maybe the 1930s and below to the 1910s starts to now look like a really nice area to look for the resumption of buying gold if you are, of course, a uh, gold buyer. So um, remember as well, from a medium to long-term perspective, central banks are now coming to the end of their hiking cycle. And although the Fed is hawkish still in the short term, going into 2024, the expectation is for um, a contraction in the economy, right? Is for contractions in the economy. And that's not just across, you know, um, that's not just in the US, that's across the globe. So central banks are expected to now start to cut rates. And so um, to kind of, you know, uh, uh, help um, 
to avoid recessions and so because we have economic cycles and so uh, in that environment gold could do very very well so any pullbacks i think to gold um in, with gold um for the, at least the medium to long term i think are going to be really nice buying opportunities and gold could in fact reach these highs and beyond so um short term wise of course no one really knows the exact turning points of things you know we just speculate on gold and manage our risk or not just gold but and anything but overall fundamentals should if they do play out then we should get um a move to the upside at some point whether it's in this demand zone or well, this demand zone, of course, no one truly knows 110%. It's, um, you know, the, the collective uh, will of the uh, of the market, right? So that's it for this week. I uh, hope you had uh, or you enjoyed the analysis and found it useful. I uh, hope you have a great trading week. Until next week, take care and uh, speak to you soon.